Welcome to the second of a series of four homilies, focusing on each of the Sundays of Advent. Each video will include a homily, a short liturgy, and music appropriate for this time of the year. Last week we began the season of Advent, and near the beginning of the video we blessed our Advent wreath. Then the first purple candle on the wreath was lit. Today we begin by lighting the second purple candle on our Advent wreath, followed by a short prayer. Stir up our hearts, O Lord, to prepare the path of your only begotten Son, that we may worthily serve him with hearts purified by his coming. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Last week, the general theme of our Liturgy of the Word was to stay awake and to be prepared for the coming of our Lord at all times, because we do not know the day or the hour when he will come. This week, preparation for Christmas will be taking place in many homes across the country. Christmas trees and decorations are going up, the Christmas turkey is ordered, and Christmas cards are starting to arrive at our door. When I send Christmas cards to people, I would much prefer to send cards that have a picture of the nativity scene, rather than a one with Santa Claus and his reindeer. But it is not as easy to find these cards as it is to find the more commercialised ones. Much of the preparation which takes place around this time of the month is for the commercialised side of Christmas. And there is nothing wrong with that as long as we remember the real reasons we celebrate Christmas and the true message that it brings. Some Christmas cards can be quite elaborate. Some may be covered in glitter. But some can be very simple and may just contain a few words. A common card that I see every year is one which contains three simple words, joy, hope and peace. And these three words simply sum up the true message of Christmas. To be totally at peace this Christmas means that we are to prepare ourselves spiritually for Christ's coming. When we experience true peace, we will also experience true joy, and we will be filled with a deep sense of hope in our Lord. In our first reading today, Isaiah presents us with a wonderful imagery of peace. Can you imagine a wolf lying down with a lamb, a panther lying down with a kid, an infant playing over a cobra's hole? That peace will come when Isaiah's prophecy of a future king is much more than a descendant of King David. That king is Christ the Messiah, who is the source and the restorer of peace. There are many reasons why 
we may not be at peace with one another. Perhaps we have forgotten that we belong to one another. Maybe we are constantly anxious and stressed about many things in life, that we become selfish and aggressive-like to others. We may not be at peace due to conflicts within our homes or communities. There are many people who live a life of animosity and resentment towards others. At times in our lives, we can all feel victims of injustice, unfaithfulness and unrighteousness. Or perhaps we have been the cause of these things to others. We need to remind ourselves that we are all sinners and we need to repent for all these sins so that we might find peace. Our Gospel reading today presents us with the familiar figure of John the Baptist. John tells us that we are to repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. Those people who came to the River Jordan to be baptised by John did so, because they recognised that they were sinners. When the Pharisees and Sadducees come to John for baptism, he calls them a brood of vipers. And that is because John, like Jesus who would follow him, saw the Pharisees and Sadducees as opposing rather than supporting his message. John's message might leave us a bit discouraged, as his baptism with water can only bring us so far. That is why he tells us, the one who will follow him will baptise you with the Holy Spirit and fire. In our first reading, Isaiah speaks of the Holy Spirit as the Spirit of the Lord and describes what we refer to as the gifts of the Holy Spirit that the Lord will bring. And he mentions some of those gifts. Wisdom, insight, counsel, power, knowledge and fear of the Lord. We are not able to become the person that the Lord calls us to be without the help of the Holy Spirit. We need the Spirit of the Lord that Isaiah speaks about in our first reading during this season of Advent. We invite the Holy Spirit to come afresh into our lives because it is only in the power of the Spirit that we can bear those fruits of the Spirit that John the Baptist calls for. Advent is a time for us to spiritually prepare ourselves for the coming of the Lord at Christmas. In today's Gospel, John the Baptist calls on us to repent. So we might want to consider receiving the Sacrament of Reconciliation as part of our preparation for Christmas. This weekend, in light of the readings we have heard in our Liturgy of the Word, let's also pray that when Jesus does come to us at Christmas, we may experience those wonderful gifts of joy, hope and peace.